Hi everybody, um, so today we're going to be talking, it's another scratch video, um, and I'm going to be going over um, what your first strat scratch project could look like. So I'm going to click the create tab over here, uh, and remember this is scratch.mit.edu, uh, just like the first video I made on this, and uh, if you missed that, so the scratch is an online programming platform um, where people of all ages can learn how to program, uh, make little cute little games and stuff, and I really recommend this video and this series if you've never like programmed before and are even have the slightest interest um, in learning how to program so i guess let's get started uh so the first thing we got to do is i guess i'm going to explain the um the kind of layout of the system so this big box in the middle is where all the code goes and by code i mean these little blocks um which do you know various different things the best way to learn about how these things work is just by trying it yourself. Um, but today I'm going to make a very simple like race car game. Um, and let's get started by looking for a race car. So uh, first you go down here, choose a sprite. Um, the little characters in the game are, are called um, sprites. Anyway, um, the I think the main thing that I wanted to get from this video is... Um, I just want to lay out the future Scratch series. So while I look for a car, uh, I'm going to talk about that. So, oh, I like this. Um, oh, food truck is so good too. Oh man, I don't know which one to choose, the Scratch Tours or the food I like the food truck, I think. Um, anyway, I, sorry, I lost my train of thought. What's the, oh yeah, so um, I want to kind of lay out the, uh, the kind of uh, format of these videos. So the, I'm going to make, each project is going to be two videos, maybe more if it's um, if it's like a complex project, uh, whether that be in Scratch or, or Ruby or whatever, but this is specifically for Scratch. So for Scratch videos, I'm going to make the first video where anybody could program it um, with any kind of level, and the second video of the project will be a more advanced topic. Um, so... I haven't decided the advanced topic for this yet, but I will have one by next video, uh, by the next uh, Scratch video. Um, so the point is that if you've never done any programming, this video is perfect for you. Uh, if you've done some programming, this video is still probably useful. Um, but the, if you've done some or more than just a little bit of programming, the next video will probably be more useful for you. So with that in mind, I hope that makes sense. Uh, this is going to be, let's get started. So this is kind of gigantic if we go into full screen mode. It's <laughs> it's massive. Um, so I guess let's let's so you can change the size here. Uh, let me make this a little bigger. Ooh, um, is that good? A little bigger. Actually, this works. Okay. So you can see the size box down here. Uh, I'm gonna change it to like 50. 50 is that too small? Let's do 60. Um, that's okay. So it's a little blurry, but it's okay. Everything you use without my glasses on. And um, let's change it to the uh, the um, hot dog. I love it so much. That's so good. So when you pick a sprite that you like, you can go into the costumes tab, and you can change it if you want. Uh, let me add some ketchup to the hot dog. Okay, looks good. Do, 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 do. Perfect. So it's just a simple text, uh, simple picture, like editor in here. You can also upload your own pictures, I believe, along with sound effects for your own games. This is honestly a really great way to learn programming. Um, anyway, let's continue. So that's the car done. Oh god, it's too big. Let's do 50. Um, so that's the car done right off the bat. I'm going to kind of pick where I want it to start, um, and this will be the first kind of line of code that we do. Uh, actually, before I pick where to start, we're going to do the, the actual track design first. So it's going to be a really simple track, um, just a circle, and I'm going to pick uh, a backdrop down here on the bottom right. Um, I'm going to click the backdrops like thing over here, and I think what I'm going to draw is just like a little center platform, something that the car like drives around, you know? Um, I think that the, the hot dog truck can fit around that. Uh, let's make it... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is good. Uh, perfect. God, I love this kind of shade of blue. Anyway, um, so this is the track. So what's really going to happen is it's going to like drive around do, 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 over here and like finish. So it's going to be a little more complicated than that. But let's let's have the starting line be here. 
uh, we can actually draw the starting line onto the backdrop. Let's let's say we go to the line tool, and again, a lot of this is just kind of figuring out what um, what these things each thing does by experimentation. So here we go. Um, actually, let's not do it be a line. Let's do actual the the text start. Can I rotate this? Yes, I can. Start. Let's double check my spelling because spelling is hard. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Um, <laughs> sorry, that that my rant about the English language is going to be saved for another video. Um, anyway, this looks like a perfect little track for me. Again, I'm not an artist. This is more talking about the programming behind it. So <laughs> I apologize for my super janky uh, setup, not nearly as janky as my new microphone setup, but again, that's a, a topic for another video. Um, <laughs> so I hope everyone's enjoying it so far. I'm really glad that you could be here with me. Um, let's go to so all these different tabs. I'm going to make another kind of like scratch introduction after this project where I go through, it's going to be a longer video. I'm going to go through each of these tabs and kind of talk about uh, what exactly each thing does here. But for now, I'm just going to go <laughs> excuse me gonna kind of go through and um, just go through the basic stuff so I'm gonna you, I'm gonna pick where I want it to start I'm gonna go to the events tab and get this button so this is like the starting point of every program so you click the little green button go and whatever uh, is attached under here let's just drag random stuff blah 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 um, when I press go, it will like execute this and then this and then this. And I'll explain that again in the in the, like the scratch basics video, but I just wanted to get this out as like a a tangible product that you could do project, sorry, that you could do before I do that. because oftentimes if you start with just the basics, a lot of people will not see the point. So this is kind of the point of this. and I'll show you like a cooler project after this. Um, but this is like the 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 most basic thing that anyone could do. So um, this is like an XY plane. This, as I move it around, if you see, um, I point it with my finger, you guys can't see my finger. <laughs> if you see over here, you can see the actual coordinates change as I move the car around. Um, so when wherever I move it, when I press the green button, it's gonna go there. What's really great about Scratch is it reads like a book, you know? Um, so, each each command kind of makes sense as like what it is and what it does. Um, anyway, that's the that's gonna be the first the first thing we do, and the next thing we do. So blah blah blah. If we stop, if we want to restart, we can just click the green button and it'll restart. I think the truck needs to be even smaller. Crazily enough, uh, let's do 38. Yeah, because I want it to fit around this bend. I'm still not sure it'll fit, but that's okay. Let's try it. So now if we press this, it'll still go back to where it starts. Um, fantastic. So after this, we wanted to move forward. Now, if we put like a move here, you can see when I start, it's going to move a little further than it did before. So if I don't have this here, it will not move forward. Like see this, so it's like not moving. But if I do this, it will it will teleport back to here, and then and then move forward ten steps. Um, so that's not exactly what we want, but um. Hold on, I need to be right back. Sorry, one sec. Uh, sorry I'm back, everybody. I had a bit of a friend who needed something. Um, yeah, I tried to explain to them that I'm with all my friends dealing with Scratch, but no, they needed me. That's no, okay, I'm kidding. If they're watching, I was totally kidding. Um, anyway, it's so funny. When I came back down here, I had to put my um, headphone thing back on, my headphone setup. And it's so janky. I have like my nice pair of actual headphones that I saved up for and bought, and <laughs> I have them on, but they have a super shit speaker. I got them for noise canceling. Uh, not speaker. They have a shoot super shit um, uh, mic microphone, uh, and so I literally have my three dollar headphones that my earbuds that came with my phone underneath my noise canceling headphones so that they're noise canceling. Uh, but I'm using that microphone. It's literally <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Sorry. Anyway, um, I'm sidetracked. So yeah, moving. Um, if I if I kept clicking on moving, if we if we put it in like a loop, um, see it just keeps going forward. So we do want it to keep going forward. 
and we want it to keep going forward forever, but how can we do that? Well, lucky for us, there's something in control that's actually called a forever loop. This is this is um, <clears throat> an analogous to like a while loop that's always true. Um, again, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. What I think, or what I thought was really cool when I was first learning Scratch is after the forever loop, it's like smooth. Like you can never get after, like you can't put another piece after the forever loop because it will never go past there. So I think that's a really good visual representation of what a forever loop is. So if I do that now, look, it just drives <laughs> it drives right off the page. Um, it it when I press it, it goes there, teleports. Um, if I pull it back, it'll you know do that again, um, and then it forever drives forward, which I think is pretty cool. Um, not super useful for what we want though. So what we can do, and this is where it gets a little complicated, we can duplicate this block, um, put in another forever loop. Now hear me out. These things, this is <laughs> without going into multi-threading at such a in like a low-level programming course. Um, multi-threading is when two things can happen simultaneously. So the computer will be checking these two things at the same time, um, and that will make sense in a second. So we need another. Oh, there's a forever loop already there. Um, what I need is an if statement. Here we go. If and if. So what I need is if we are um, clicking a key. So if the uh, right arrow is pressed, question mark, duplicate, if the left arrow is pressed. So these two things, what do they do? Well, they're pretty self-explanatory. When, well, this might not be actually super obvious. It's what happens is when the green flag is clicked, both of these will happen at the same time. It will teleport there and will always move forward. What we're gonna be doing here is we're going to be checking, forever checking, if the right key, the right arrow, is pressed or if the left arrow is pressed. Now we want to go back to the motion tab, and if the right arrow is pressed, we want it to turn to the right. And if the left arrow is pressed, we turn to the left. Boom. So with this, these two little lines of code, we can start it, and I can kind of turn. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Um, oh, this is interesting. So because I'm pointing up when I start the game again, it will always be pointing up. We don't want that. So let's make this our kind of reset branch. So we're going to, um, when the flag is clicked, we're going to point in the direction 90. Oops, not always. That would really mess it up we would point in direction 90. So what this is gonna do is when we start, even if we go in a weird direction and press stop, when I start it again, it will still be going to the right. So that's kind of illustrated here. Does that make sense? That's that's pretty good. And remember, if you have questions, please post them down below. I would love to help people learn Scratch or any new thing that you're like, would you know ask me about. Um, anyway, so that's pretty good. I think it's a little too fast. So I'm going to slow it down to five steps and see how that looks. This is a much more manageable speed. It feels like more the speed of a truck. Boop, boop. So it's still instant turning, which is not fantastic. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, oops. Um, what I'm going to do is, let's let's put a wait in. Where is wait? It's probably in control. Yeah, wait one second. So this will stop us from turning so instantaneously. Uh, oh, one second is way too big. Let's do like this. So you can see it's more of like a gradual turning motion. And we still continue to move forward. So what's really happening is when I actually when I take this out, notice how when I do it now, I still am driving. So I'm going, I'm doing donuts pretty much. Um, when I take this out, there's no weight, and so it instantly turns. And so while it's probably moving a little bit, it's not moving that much, um, which is not really realistic. So what's really happening is it's kind of the computer's going back and forth and deciding. Am I turning? Am I moving? Am I turning? Am I moving? Am I turning? Am I moving? And if I put this in here, 
it will kind of make us do both at the same time. I, I don't know how to describe this. I'll, I might draw a diagram. If I do, I'll put it up. If I don't, just imagine with me. It's it it allows the computer to move the car further while still spinning. If that makes sense. If that helps clarify that. Um, so right now, I'm actually pretty happy. I think one thing I do want to add is I want to add a pen. Let's see. Do we still have pens? Am I so out of date that we don't have pens anymore? Okay. Um, that would be really funny if they actually removed drawing. Um, let's see. Sorry for this, everybody. I am trying to find pen down. Huh. Well, I guess they removed that. Wow, that blows my mind. I used to do so much with pen down. Um, like, you used to be able to draw stuff. Wow, they really removed it? Um, that blows my mind. Wow, that, that I have to scratch one of those projects off the list then. I was going to do like a 3D render. Anyway, um, that's okay. So, let's see what color change does. Oh, I like it. So, we're going to do... Um, every, every time here, we're also going to change the color by five. <laughs> so now we have our amazing tripping hot dog cart, kind of driving around, doing little, little donuts if you want, um, crashing into walls. Something that we could also do is, um, I'm just adding little bits and pieces now, uh, is if on edge bounce. Here we go. So forever, if on edge, actually let's let's switch the order of these. Here we go. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna move five steps. If it's on the edge, it's gonna bounce us. And what that means is if I crash into the wall, boop, I'm gonna go the opposite way. So see what happened right there? Like look at this. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Amazing. In my advanced topic, I might deal with collision detection between two entities. So I might like also make us bounce off of, let's say, the middle platform. So instead of driving forward, it would just go like bunk, and it would also like bounce off. Very cool. I'm pretty happy with this. I hope that you learned a little bit, and um, I, I really do encourage programming knowledge from everybody. Um, I think that everyone can benefit from it, um, just knowing the basics of programming. This is a little oversimplified. I will kind of... Um, in my, like, scratch video later, my, like, general scratch video where I, like, talk about, like, each of these tabs and stuff, I'll kind of go over their equivalents in, um, fully typed programming languages, not the drag and drop type. So, like, I'll, I'll equate it to maybe something like Java or Python, like, where the forever loop is, like, a while loop, and the if statements are if statements, um, the waiting can be, like, a timer of some kind. I'll kind of go through their equivalents, maybe I'll make a, a, a presentation, um, because it's kind of important to see how, like, there's no point in learning, I mean, there is a point in learning Scratch if you want to, but there's a, it's, it's better to see how it can connect to, like, the full real world. Um, let's do, let's title the titles here, car, game, um, actually, Rubis race car game. Uh, so for the next, uh, Scratch video, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to... Um, add it, make it be multiplayer, like local multiplayer, so I add another truck, and I might also do collision detection with the other truck and also the center aisle. That'll probably involve using more complex or more simple sprites, as, uh, it's not always perfect, as you probably just saw there. Um, the collision detection is, collision detection is not always perfect with, uh, in Scratch. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna put my, the Rubis race car game in the description. So you can go, you can click on the link in the description and actually see it uh, and play it yourself if you'd like. Or like mess around with the code, um, add things, change things, like save it to your own thing. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope some of you who have never programmed before really learned something. Um, if you did, subscribe. I'm going to be doing Scratch videos every week. Um, and like the video, comment if you have any questions or comments. And um yeah, I'm really glad you guys could uh, join me today. I hope you had a great day. Bye!